Welcome to Match Fishing Masterclass. You join me here today at Tullabarn Farm in Warwickshire, where we're going to have a go on an open match. Last night I just decided, instead of just doing a normal feature, we'd, we'd have a crack at a live match. I've had a few, a few maggots in the fridge from last week, so they're old maggots like, but I needed to use them, so I decided to come here to fish the open. I've drew peg eight on club, which, believe it or, or not, I've not fished for F1s for about 18 months. Not, I've drew this, this lake before at Tunnel Barn um, on a Drennan Knockout Cup qualifier. And I think I drew one peg to my right. I think Mikey Williams was on this peg or the next peg to me. Um, and it was all right that day. It was a bit warmer. Um, but, yeah, I've spoke to the locals and they've said it's been all right here in the winter, but last week the, that whole bank over there beat everyone on this bank. So, you never know. I spoke to the bloke, there's a bloke just opposite there and he drew the next peg to here the weekend and he said he, he, had, he had about £50 in, in the first two hours and then it, was, it just felt like he'd run out of fish, so... Hopefully today is a bit different, but we'll see. We've got five minutes till the all in, so I'm just going to put some back shots on my pellet rigs, and then I'll talk you through my plan of attack. So, the plan is to start short, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go long down my left to the next pallet and sh start on that short line, just to try and gauge what's, what's happening. I don't want to put any, pa in, any bait in my peg until I know how, how the lake's fishing. I've set up four rigs, two uh, two pellet rigs and two maggot rigs because I think it's going to be a case of starting on pellets and turning turn it to maggot lines so the first rig I've got which is three foot deep and this is for about 10 metres over it's only about 11 and a half metres wide this peg but I found three, three foot just on the slope about a metre and a half off the far bank um, I've got small 4x12s float, matrix uh, 8 to 10 slick elastic and I've just got a small pot on the end that I'm going to put some, some micros through and then we've got just some 4mm dynamite pro expanders that we're going to fish on the hook and then later on just got a few, few maggots, brought about two and a half points with me and I think when it starts to get harder, we're going to have to change to maggots. So yeah, dead simple. I'm just going to start on that line over there. Just out my peg. And then once we get, get a feeling for how it's fishing, we'll come into, into this peg then. So yeah. Right, I'll get my nets in. And we'll start. So unprepared for this today, but we'll give it a shot. The good thing about this kind of fishing is it is really simple to be honest. You just need to find the right depths, what the fish want to be in, and then just it's either going to be 
pellet tool mag, it's simple as literally got three bait bait tubs on my side tray. And on all my all my um, rigs, just got a matrix flexi pots, the smallest ones. I was fishing matrix slick elastic. Dead simple. Right, couple of minutes to the all in, so I'll see you then. Right, that's the all in. I was just checking how far up the shelf my other rig was to this. Because later on, there's a chance that that, that line to my left could be really good and I could push them a bit shallower up the bank. So I'll start putting a few micros through the pot. I think when you when you're setting up, you, there's a chance you can push the the fish out of your peg. Then through the match, they'll slowly come back in. That's why I'm starting just at the next the next platform because no one's been sat on that crashing about making any noise. So there's a good chance there's going to be some fish sat there. It also gives me a chance to have a cheeky look at the, the bloke on the next peg. He's been fishing here all winter. So I'm guessing he knows what he's, what he's doing. He's also started short. At like five metres out. Bloke opposite me on the other bank. Is that a fish? Looked like his rig was, was quite shallow. Good chance. I think he's caught it over, to be honest. Thought I had a little indication then, but... Not sure. Fishing over. That tells me straight away that the fish are coming from shallower water. There we go. First fish. 
Not got a clue what it was, don't feel big. Only a small fish, but it shows that they're coming into that depth, which is good. Another fish there. Straight away that was. Just as I, I lay my pellet into the into the shelf. I could turn a little dink. It wasn't even where I put my bait to be honest. Just lay my lay my rig away to put my pellets in. float dinked. There's like another small fish. A little small left one. This time I'm going to put some micros in that pot, but I'm not actually going to feed them. I'm just going to see if I can get a bite without feeding. And then if I do hook one, I'll just tap them out before I start shipping back. Leave this for a couple of minutes. Don't get a bite. 
I'll just dip the pot in the water and feed them micros. Not filling the pot right up, it's like half filling it. We are 25 minutes in. I've got three F1s, two small ones and a three pounder. I've got about four pound. It's not hectic, but we're having a few bites, so don't mind. does seem to be the case already is you need to, you need to feed to get a bite and that third fish that I didn't actually feed and I've put my rig in waited a couple of minutes not a sign and the moment I've, I've fed my micros I've had my bites but I don't want to fill the peg with micros really. I want to try and catch a couple of fish if I can. Off one feed. But we'll see how it goes and we might have to just feed every fish. And just keep rotating round because you, you won't be able to just keep feeding down one hole. You might have to feed, catch a fish, move, try and catch another one and go back. Again, I've not fed this time. I've not had any indications. I'm going to give it another... 20 seconds or so. Then I'm going to tap my bait in. Straight away, indication. So that's telling me I need to feed to catch any fish. Which isn't good really because I feel like I'm going to have to force the peg before we've even started. Like another better fish. There we go. Yep. About two and a half pound. These F ones have got a lot bigger since. I was on here last time. What I'm going to do, because my elastic is a bit, it's a bit sticky, I'm just going to jump off my box and get some lube for it.
what I'm what I'm gonna do. Because I've got to feed every truck by I'm gonna um just put a tiny bit of micros in. Literally 20 micros. that have not actually been in my peg so I've not touched the fish in my peg so hopefully if this slows down I can just come into my peg and just catch a load <laughs> that's the plan fed my bike straight away then. So let's see what happens. Boom. Straight away. Fish. So hopefully we've worked it out within half an hour. Which is what you want really. You don't want to spend hours and hours trying to work your, work your peg out. small one this time. Don't know scrap. The bigger ones put up less of the fight. Again, 20 micros. indication straight away now. Whoa. There we go, that, that feels, feels fired up there. It's like the float come five inch out of the water before I connected with a fish. What I might have to do go closer to the bank just to get into a bit shallower water just fishing down the first shelf there might just have to come up it slightly this might be a carp actually definitely doesn't feel like an F1 or one that's not hooked in the mouth anyway. Well, oh, it's got a stick. Yeah, I think it's foul looked. It's looking for snags. When a fish is foul looked, you tend to find they do look for snags to try and brush the hook up against. Whoa. It's 
got to be a carp, this has. So it's way over to the far bank now. I'm only using 09, 09 up length on this on this rig. I've been landing big carp all winter on that to be honest when I'm when I've been fishing for silverfish. Yeah, it's a small carp. done with that to be honest. I'll have one more chuck here. Now we might might go up the bank a bit. A bit closer in. What I didn't spot is he's dragged my float through a bush. He's bent all my float. Bent the wire in my float, so I'll have to try and sort that out. Ah, little indication then. A little indication. Ever so finicky today. Okay, we are just over two hours in now, and it's been raining for the last about hour and twenty minutes. And the fishing's gone really funny, to be fair. I did lose my way a, a bit. I far looked, I far looked to fish just down my left hand side. And I started doing stupid stuff like feeding maggots when they clearly didn't want maggots. So I swapped back to pellets. I've nicked a couple. I've got 11, 11 F1s and I've, I've lost a carp. But looking around, the fish do not want to be in the deeper water at all. I've had a little go in front of me, just on a top kit plus one. I've not had a not had a bite there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go and have a look over. I've got some reach just to my left. Feed a few pellets. I've got a block of a bare bank in front of me. But watching what people are doing, everyone seems to be catching like towards reeds and stuff. 
like I said, I haven't been here in a long time, so it'd be a wise, wise move to kind of follow, follow suit. The weather's just gone from one extreme to another. It's been raining really heavy for the last hour and 20 minutes or so, and now the sun's out. Hopefully in this shallower water I'll get a reaction pretty quick. Another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start flicking a few more crystals down, down my right hand side. Got a few rushes and stuff down there so it's about 12 to 15 inch deep down there. Same depth as what I've got across. So I can use this same rig. There's an indication there. Shouldn't have struck at that really, it weren't. Weren't a quick bite. indications. That feels foul looked. So a few little dibs and the float lifted up. Doesn't feel right. Ah, there you go. Knew it. Knew it. Oh well, tells us there's some fish out there though. After an hour, I was probably winning the light, to be honest. But then things started to go wrong. Ah. The fish on that instantly over there. One of them shot off. We change a number 11 for number 13 shot just to pop the float up a bit. So I'm not striking at liners.
this elastic just stretches forever. Slick. The left one about just under a pound. Hopefully we get a little, a little run over here. And we can finish off down the edge. Loads of fish over there. Just getting loads of liners. That's a nice fish. Probably three pound.
top. I'm just going to feed my markers in a little ball. That way they're not they're not going to be floating mid water. I know they're going to get get down in a pile. Let's put some lube on this. Top kits must be filthy inside. Right, it's just starting to rain again, so I'll join you when the rain stops. Finally stopped raining. Like, again, the rain sent it really funny. What I'm going to do now? I'm just going to have a go down my edge where I've been chucking a few micros. And hopefully, if they're down there, we'll catch a bit quicker as well. I've got 15, 15 F1s now. put my glasses on, straight away I can see a bit of colouring up down the edge so I know there's, there's fish there straight away. Let's try again without it raining every two minutes. Most it was raining just. I managed to put a few F1s in the in the net. It's from down this, this edge. I've got 18 there. A 
they've all been a nice stamp, like two pound. Just tucking the rig right into these these reeds here. been so obvious springs on the way today like with the fish just not wanting maggots literally won't go by them put a pellet on and you, you get a bite Must have been foul looked. We don't lose them when they're in the mouth. fish down there now. Just add a little little indication. What I'm going to do in a minute, once once this one's in, I'm just going to swap my elastic up to that Matrix green slick. This is the orange slick. Yeah. What did he have? 86. Yeah, he said he had 56 F1s. I've only had 27, 28, something like that. Sign. Thank you very much. Six 
different. Yeah, cheers. Right guys, that's it. We're all weighed in. I've had £63 something for third. There's been two £80 um, down the other end of the lake. Like the locals said, it's fished exactly how, how they said it would. And um, I'm really pleased, pleased with that, to be honest. I've not done it for a, a long time. And I, I was way behind the curve. I was learning on the job kind of thing. Um, just working out the feeding, whereas... You're always an hour behind the locals before before you've worked it out, but you have really enjoyed it. Um, one thing I've realised is you couldn't get a bite without feeding. Like you'd have to tap if you tapped like three micros in, you'd get a bite, or if you tapped thirty micros, you'd get a bite. However, if you didn't tap any in, you you won't get a bite. It's ever so strange. And in my peg. Um, there was nice, nice stamp F ones I've, I've had, but they would not touch maggots. Whenever it got a bit good, I thought, oh, I'm, I'll turn this to to maggots, and it just didn't happen. It was like poison in the peg. I think they've they've had them thrown at them that that much through the winter. They just they just weren't interested. But yeah, um, it'll be interesting tomorrow. There's a fishermania on here, so I've just had a little catch up with Paul Holland and Will Raisin. They've just stopped off to Sailor because um, they're down here for the fisherman here tomorrow. So that'll be interesting how it fishes tomorrow. I've just told them how, how I fished it today. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. See you later.